I came here to tell you I'm not an executioner. It doesn't feel good to kill a man. Not a bit good. But your husband didn't leave me any choice. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. (laughs) 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 Sounds wonderful. And then, Mr. Paladin? And then, perhaps a cordial for a nightcap. I do believe I'll be looking forward to this evening a great deal, Mr. Paladin. And I, too. Mr. Paladin! Oh, what? I've been looking for you. Uh, I find you. Hey, boy, your timing is abysmal. Oh, thank you, Mr. Paladin, but uh, credit must go to mailman. He just brings special delivery letter for you. (sighs) Excuse me, my dear. Oh, say, I'll meet you in the lounge later. Well... Oh, she is very high dungeon. Dungeon? Yes, sir, that's what I say. Very high dungeon. Uh, dear Mr. Paladin, I need you for an important assignment immediately, and so forth. So. There is a $3,000 bonus for you upon completion. Something, something, something. I appreciate you seeing you at your earliest convenience, so... Very truly yours, E.J. Randolph, Coloma Bank. Coloma. Oh, you there not long ago, yes? Oh, yes, about two months ago. Oh, ye. Ah, uh, here are your two tickets for opera tonight. I'll take them back, hey boy. Yes, uh, what? I'm leaving for Coloma tonight. Oh, must be real big trouble to interfere with lady who was almost kissed. And wire Mr. Randolph. Tell him I'm on my way. Dandruff bothers most men. Most women, too, so listen. Today, you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. Coloma was a poor excuse for a town. It's out alone and awkward in the center of a dry, scorched plain with a few ranches stretching back towards the low mesas behind it. I'd been there before, and I killed a man there. I didn't like the town. I didn't like the people. But Randolph had offered me a lot of money. I found him sitting behind his desk at the bank. Well, Paladin, sure good to see you. Hello, Mr. Randolph. Hey, sit down, sit down. Thank you. Ah... Uh... How about a little rye to cut the dust? Mm, yeah, I don't mind. Hey, didn't waste any time getting here. Uh, the distance between San Francisco and Coloma is shorter when there's a $3,000 fee involved. <laughs> right to the point. That's what I like about you, Paladin. That's why I sent for you. Well, here's luck. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> So, what can I do for you, Mr. Randolph? Uh, you did a job for John Griffin about two months ago. He hired you to bring back Steve Morrow. Remember him? You don't forget someone you've killed. (laughs) Didn't mean any offense. No, no, I'm not offended. Morrow tried to kill me. I had to kill him. Griffin wanted Morrow because Morrow had killed his son. What's that got to do with you? Morrow robbed this bank. Before he killed that Griffin boy. 
He took $30,000. I still don't see the connection. Paladin, I've got to have that $30,000 back by the first of the month or I'll lose everything I own. And you need help? Yes. Yes, I need help. Badly. Fifteen years of hard work, building a business and a name for myself. Gone, just like that. Gone and signed over to John Griffin. John Griffin? How does he figure in this? Mm -hmm. He's the biggest depositor the bank has. He knows about the stolen money, and he's using that knowledge. He's given me notice that he wants to withdraw $30,000 on the first. If I don't have it, the deed to this building and most of the other property the bank owns will be signed over to him. And I don't have it, Mr. Paladin. Well, then, that makes my job fairly easy. Well, how's that? Find Morrow's widow. She must have the money, or at least know where it is. I don't think so. She's still living in that cabin up there on the mesa. Well, the sheriff and I have been up a dozen times searching the place, trying to talk her into telling us where it is. She hasn't got the money. Well, if she had it, she'd have left Coloma and gone someplace else to spend it. Either that or at least paid up the back taxes on the farm. Huh. I thought for sure Rose had that money. Rose? Steve Morrow's widow. You mean Lucy Morrow. Her name's Lucy. Oh, well, uh, I'm going to check into the hotel and freshen up a bit. And then what? Ride out and talk to Lucy Morrow. Morning, Mr. Randolph. Yes? Good afternoon, Miss Morrow. I'm Paladin... Did you think I could forget you, Mr. Paladin? No, I suppose not. I'd like to talk to you, if I may. I'm going to work on the rose garden. You can talk there if you wish. Yes, I noticed them as I rode up. They're beautiful. They are. It's an eastern variety, Calinaris. Oh. Must be rather difficult to grow them out here. Oh, it's worth the trouble to have one lovely thing here. They were a present from Steve. He brought me some cuttings after one of his trips back east. Why have you stayed on here? Simple. There's nowhere else to go and no money to go with. Your husband took $30,000 from the Coloma Bank. It's never been found. This house was turned inside out. Do you think I'd be living here like this if I had $30,000? Uh, perhaps not. I don't know anything about that money, Mr. Paladin. I don't mean to bother you, Mrs. Morrow. Why do you bother me, then? You knew this before you came out here. I killed Steve. If it hadn't been me, it would have been somebody else, somewhere else. He was an outlaw, a killer. I suppose I wanted to come here and tell you that I'm not an executioner. I was bringing him in, and he went for his gun. Doesn't feel good to kill a man. Not a bit good. I know you're not the kind to kill for the sake of another notch on your gun, but... Steve was my husband. Please don't come back here again. Or if you have to, wait until I'm gone. You're leaving? Yes. They're auctioning the place for $276 back taxes. Oh, don't look so pained. I'll get along. Maybe it'll be best. Get out of here, Paladin. Leave me alone, please. Good afternoon, Mrs. Morrow. <laughs> I'm a mean widow, kid. And are you pleased with yourself? Sure, because I'm a germ. A bathroom germ. Bathrooms is where the meanest germs get to live. <laughs> Do I have fun causing odor and spreading disease? Well, you better watch out, son, or your landlady may find out about Lysol brand disinfectant. Lysol? No, Lysol. That's what I said, Lysol. Well, anyway, a lot of women are finding that a dash of Lysol in their cleaning suds every week wipes out nasty bathroom disease germs like you, disinfects from one cleaning to the next as no other product can, wipes out many deadly viruses, too. Lysol makes every cleaner work better. It's the easy, modern way to get bathrooms really clean and 
free of odors. Lysol can do that? Mm, and what's more, now besides regular Lysol, there's a new sweet-smelling pine-scented Lysol. And they're both out to get you. Hey, was you ever a mean little kid? One more remark like that and I'll open this bottle of Lysol. Help! The Griffin Ranch was the same as it had been. Old and solid and well-kept. Run by a man who was old and solid and tough. A man who had lost one son by Steve Morrow's gun and had one son left. A man who could not forget or forgive. Well, you look about the same, Paladin. Come on in, set a spell. I'd just soon sit out here in the fresh air, Mr. Griffin. Fine, fine. What brings you back to these parts? $30,000. Stolen money, eh? A lot of people like to get their hands on that. You ought to have a pretty good idea where it might be. Why do you say that? Well, you were the last person to be with that murdering fool. The way I had it figured, Morrow had the money with him when you killed him. I uh, hear you've been living pretty high on the hog up in San Francisco. Those are harsh words, Griffin. Oh, no, no. Don't get itchy. I was just only joshing. You wouldn't be back here if you had it. Steve Morrow didn't have that money when I found him. And according to his wife, he didn't even have it when he left the farm. Oh, uh, you talked to her? I just came from there. Well, it takes a lot of nerve for a man to go up and talk to the wife of somebody he killed. Hey, you suppose Steve Morrow hid it on that farm of his? Mr. Randolph and the sheriff searched it. I know. Old Randolph's getting fidgety. A while back, he got the idea that Morrow buried the money up on the mesa. <laughs> You never saw such digging and poking around. I swear the mesa's ten feet shorter on account of it. That farm adjoins your property, doesn't it? Yeah. On the south. Why? I hear it's up for auction. Should be worth at least a couple of thousand dollars to him. I'll get it for 276 the taxes. <laughs> Someone will outbid you at that price. I don't reckon so, Paladin. Nobody else is going to bid on it. Those who can afford to bid on it don't have any use for that farm. Randolph might have use for it. Ah, that old pussyfoot. <laughs> He wouldn't know how to plant potatoes. He might know how to dig for stolen money. Hey, tell me something, Paladin. You working for Randolph? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, you are working for him. I might have known. You know, I just assume the money doesn't get back to the bank. Oh? Uh -huh. I'd lose about $60,000 in holdings that belong to it. But those holdings will be mine come the first of the month. Oh, well, that's not a pretty way to talk, but at least it's the truth. I see. What happens to Randolph, then? Out. Out in the cold where he deserves to be. If I ran my ranch like he runs that bank, I'd have been out of business a long time ago. Well, getting close to sundown, I think I'll be heading back to town. Oh, well, Paladin, I hate to see a man like you working on the dark side of the fence. I thought you always roamed the green fields. Uh, which are the green fields, Griffin? Mine are. By the way, if you buy that farm just for the taxes, Steve Morrow's widow won't get a cent. Well, now, ain't that a downright shame? She didn't kill your son, Griffin. No, but her husband did. And all I hope is that his kin are gonna suffer on account of it. That's how I feel about Morrow and her. <laughs> Come in. Paladin? Well, Mr. Randolph. You, uh, make it a habit, staying up this late? <laughs> I do my best thinking when the town's settled for the night. You've covered a lot of ground today. You getting discouraged? Did you come here to discourage me? Yeah, there's a lot of territory between Coloma and the Mesa. Morrow could have hidden that money anywhere. Not without telling his wife. Now, since when does a killer stop to worry about his wife? Randolph, whatever you want to say about Morrow, he loved his wife. He'd have wanted to make sure she was provided for him. Why, he even spoke about her when he was dying. His last words were, Rose, tell her that... Wait a minute. Tell her... What are you talking about? Randolph, that money's up there on the farm. <laughs> you mean she does have it? She doesn't know it, but it's there. Where is it, then? Why, we've torn that place apart. You just didn't dig in the right spot. 
I'm going up there now and get your money. You wait here. It's one o'clock in the morning. And I'll be digging by two. Now there's a luxury car that fits regular parking spaces in ordinary garages that's easy to handle in traffic. It's America's compact luxury car, the Ambassador by Rambler. Now, medium-priced car buyers can have the room, comfort, luxury, and performance they expect in a fine car, but without excessive length, width, and bulk. If other medium-priced cars have sized and priced you out of the market, then you owe it to yourself to test our best, American Motors' finest, the luxuriously compact ambassador. Note the quality construction and careful attention to detail. Thrill to the superbly responsive 270-horsepower V8 engine. Enjoy luxury features like individually adjustable front seats that glide back and forth separately. Five minutes at the wheel of an ambassador will change your ideas about luxury cars. Test our best, the Ambassador V8 by Rambler. Finest car ever priced so close to the lowest. See, drive the luxurious Ambassador, now at Rambler dealers. When I dismounted at Lucy Morrow's, I thought I heard a horse nicker in a nearby clump of cottonwoods. I waited, but all was quiet except for the wind through the trees. Lucy Morrow was a light sleeper. She answered my second knock. What do you want? Uh, put the shotgun down, Mrs. Morrow. What are you doing here this time of night? The money. It's here on the farm. We've been through that before, Paladin. They ripped my place apart. Every floorboard, every inch of this cabin, the yard's full of holes. You saw it this afternoon. I know, Mrs. Morrow, but... The this... money isn't here. Look, this is my last night in the only home I ever had, and I don't mean to be bothered. Mrs. Morrow... Now get would... away from here before I blast that shirt right off your back. You wouldn't have to leave tomorrow if I find the money. I'm not wasting any more words with you. Miss Morrow... In your rose garden, is there a bush not doing well? Paladin, it's late and it's cold. Answer me, is there? Well, yes, there is one, but what's that got to do with the money? Flowers need soil at their roots, Ms. Morrow, not gold. What? If you give me a shovel, I'll show you what I mean. You know, it took me a while to... Figure out that a dying man wouldn't call his wife Rose. Her name was Lucy. Hold the lamp a little closer. I think we've got it. Now. Yeah, this is it. The leather bag from the Coloma bank. We'll open it. Yeah. Gold coins. $30,000 worth. Here in the Rose Garden all the time. Drop that. Huh? Raise your hand. What? Come on. Do what I say. Good. Now just stand steady. All right, Cleet. Let's move in. Keep that light high, woman, so as we can see you both. Lucy. Yes? When I say the word, throw that lamp at them high, eye level, then hit the ground fast. I'll say when. All right. <sighs> Now. No more. Don't shoot again. Just stand easy, mister. You shot him. You shot my boy. I didn't have much choice. Cleet. Cleet, boy. Are you hurt bad? Uh, I'll, I'll be all right, Paul. I'll get you for this, Paladin. Don't try anything foolish, Mr. Griffin. You're already in enough trouble. I'm in trouble. Trying to hijack stolen money. Trespassing, attempted murder. Paladin. Paladin, there's someone coming. Yeah, I heard him. I think it's Randolph. Randolph? He knew I was coming out here. He probably couldn't stand waiting in town. After all, the money belongs to his bank. Oh. Huh. Paladin! Paladin, you all right? Yes, we're all right. We're over here, Mr. Randolph. Well, what happened? What was all the shooting? Well, there was a little discussion as to who was going to get that bank's money. I won. You... You mean you have the money? You, you found it, all of it? I think so, here. Oh. oh, good. Good, that's it right enough. Now, in regards to my fee, Mr. Randolph... Yes? I want you to give it to Lucy. What? Lucy? I think a woman ought to be able to keep her home if she wants to. At the auction tomorrow, you can decide whether you want to stay or leave this charming town. Thank you, Paladin. As for you, Griffin, get your boy back to your own ranch and bandage that leg of his. 
I don't think Lucy Morrow cares one way or the other what happens to you. Mr. Randolph wants to bring charges later. That's up to him. As for myself, I'm saying goodbye to Coloma for the last time. You are back, Mr. Faladi. And ready to see the city bright and shining. Oh, best you go away two, three more days, maybe. Why should I? Her. Who? Her. Her lady over there. He very unhappy when you will not take her to the opera. Oh, didn't you explain it was business? Oh, yes, sir. Important business? Yes, sir, but uh, her business more important to her, I think, Mr. Paladin. Uh, he, he maybe kill you, huh? <laughs> I hope not. Well, the best way is the direct way. Excuse me. Hmm? Oh. I hope you missed me. Hmm? You did miss me. Oh. I have no other cheek to turn. Then kindly turn yourself around and leave me alone. I can hardly do that. You see, I've thought of nothing and no one but you all this time. Really? Really. <laughs> Am I to believe? You are to believe only that which will make you feel better and me feel better and both of us enjoy a lovely evening together. That, to me, would be a simple solution. So? Dinner? Well... Please. You are a very convincing man. The current issue of TV Radio Mirror has a feature story on the man who portrays Paladin every Sunday night on CBS Radio, Mr. John Daner. <laughs> Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Albert Alley and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Eleanor Tannen, and Joseph Kearns. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.